meaningful and long-term journaling practice. It's actually quite simple. All you really need to do is let go of your preconceived ideas about journaling and be a lot more creative with your writing. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some do's and don'ts of journaling that will literally help you build a journaling practice that will last you a lifetime. Number one, don't go out and buy a fancy journal with all of the fancy journaling supplies. You do want to keep your journal very simple and very minimal. Because remember, you're trying to build a journaling practice that will last you a lifetime. So you don't really want to put a stamp or a specific idea of what you think your journal should look like. You should just keep it very simple. This is actually a motivating factor to write in it. For the simple fact that when we start doing things like decorating our journal and using things like washi tapes and markers and highlighters and things like that, it can become a chore or a task really fast. If you think about if you're having a bad day and you want to write in your journal, but writing in your journal is gonna require you to highlight and draw things and do all these other <laughs> kind of things into your journal, you're gonna be discouraged to actually use the journal for what it's used for. A really good example that I can think of is bullet journaling. I really love the idea of bullet journaling, but at one point I got really caught up in all of the fancy spreads that people were doing that I got very frustrated because it was just so time consuming and I spent so much more time trying to make the journal look pretty rather than actually using the journal for what it was supposed to be used for. So when I started gearing my attention more towards the journaling method or the bullet journal method and how it's supposed to be used, I actually start seeing benefit in using it. So keep your journal pretty minimal. And if you feel the need to make it more fancy or pretty or whatever, you can always use markers and things inside of the journal at any given time. But the idea of the journal overall should be very minimal and simple. Number two, don't restrict your writing to writing just about your day, but do allow yourself freedom and creativity with your writing. When you think about something that you're gonna do long term, some of us get a little bit hesitant because we think we make we're bored or just disinterested in it. But the more options you have, the more likely you are to do something long term. So allowing yourself the ability and the creativity to write about different things such as memories, writing letters to people and not really giving them to them because they're in your journal or even just writing a story or a poem something that represents how you feel at any given time allows you the creativity to do something different in your journal you don't have to always sit down and write about your day you don't always have to write about how you feel or how something affected you you can just be very creative and use it as an outlet to write I know one thing that I absolutely love about journaling is that it helped me become a better writer because I've allowed myself to be very creative. So not only was I able to express myself and express my feelings and emotions, I was also able to do it in a creative way, which I think is really important when we think about building a journaling practice that is going to last you a lifetime. Number three, don't try so hard, but do allow yourself time to process your thoughts. Now, sometimes you may feel like you need to write or even you may want to write, but if you sit down trying to write, it's just going to make the process a lot more difficult and very unpleasant. There have been many times where I sat down to write and I couldn't think of anything to write. And there have been times where I sat down to write and I just sat down and I thought for 30 minutes or an hour. But allowing yourself the creativity and the freedom to do that is what makes your journaling practice special and catered to you. Because sometimes journaling isn't always about writing. A lot of times it's about processing and understanding emotions. And sometimes we do that by just sitting and thinking. So don't always try so hard to write something, but allow yourself the freedom to process your thoughts and understand your thoughts to even be able to write something. Number four is something I'm so guilty of, and that is do not use your journal to talk negative about or to yourself or judge yourself, but do use your journal to understand and process why you feel the way you feel about yourself. And this kind of goes into a very dangerous part of journaling where you can sit and ponder over negative thoughts about yourself or even a situation and journaling really just becomes an, another outlet to complain and to just 
be a dump for your negative thoughts, which sometimes that's okay. And sometimes that works, but you don't want to make that a habit. What you actually want to do is use your journal as a way to understand and process how you feel. And how you do this is by simply asking yourself a question rather than making statements. So for instance, let's say, I don't know, you feel like a failure. You don't want to write in your journal how you are a failure, why you're a failure, all of the reasons why you believe you're a failure. What you should do is ask yourself a question. Why do I feel like this? Why do I feel like a failure? What happened in my life to make me feel this way? This way you get an understanding of why you may feel that way. And because you may have a better understanding, you can start processing those thoughts and those feelings and coming up with different ideas about what you can do to not feel that way about yourself. It helps you come up with solutions rather than sit and ponder in the negative thoughts. And number five is don't give up if you have not journaled for a while or even a long time but do allow yourself ups and downs. Now, when you think about a lifetime, there are gonna be ups and downs and it's gonna be the same thing with your journaling practice. I have definitely had ups and downs in my journaling practice. I've had times where I've written every day, multiple times a day sometimes, and then there have been times I've gone months and not written a thing. But that's really a part of life when you think about something that you wanna do for a lifetime. So allow yourself those ups and downs. There may be times in your life where you may not feel like writing anything and it may be times in your life where you may be too busy. So don't give up if you haven't written in a long time or just kind of put it to the side and say, well, I guess I give up on that because I haven't done it. Because that's that's really all a part of building a journaling practice that's catered to you is you can always pick up the pen and your journal and write whenever you want to. It will always be there. So as long as journaling is something that you enjoy doing, it would be a practice catered to your, you and your lifestyle. So just make sure you're allowing those ups and downs. And if you haven't journaled in two years, but you wake up one day and feel like journaling, pick up the journal and write. Write as though you've been writing the whole time and never taking a break because that is the freedom and the creativity that journaling allows. Okay, so those are my five do's and don'ts of journaling. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you next.